Sahbi Human Wala. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Safina Saudi Nothing But Facts live stream. As today, we are looking at the unfortunate and the sa- uh, situation that's happening in Indonesia because as we always do, uh, the as we always do here, Wednesdays is for the affairs of the Ummah. And the Ummah is having some... This one too? We did it too? Okay. The Ummah is having some seriously sad affairs here. And that is the Indonesia earthquake. So let's let's uh, get up to date on that. Because if you're... As the Prophet wasallam said... If you do not care for the affairs of the Ummah... Then you're not one of us. This You're not one of us doesn't mean you're a kafir. It means that you haven't fulfilled... The, the rights or the dues or the uh, the requirements or the preconditions of being somebody who is um, caring about his nation. You haven't fulfilled uh, uh, those conditions of being a Muslim. So that's what we're going to get into today. We're going to read that. We're going to see also, we're going to look at also some of the nonsense that Qatar is getting. Honestly, I was not even a big fan. Oh, great. I was not even a big fan of Qatar hosting the World Cup, right? Because it's 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 lahu, it's a waste of money, it's a lot of issues. There's khamr, all that stuff. Okay, it's not the thing of for a Muslim to be so invested in lahu for billions of dollars to kick a ball around. Now, on the other hand, it's like they're getting bullied around f- just for being who they are. So I'm sort of like with them right now, right? So it, there is a, a concept in Islam that's very important for us to know, that the beginnings are not always like the ends. The, beginning, the rulings on the beginnings are not always the rulings on the ends. And what that means is that you may be against something in the beginning, but once it happens, right, and now you're stuck with it, now you have to, uh, to, to, to support it, in a sense. Like, no, like, well, like, for example, yeah, that's an example, for example, right? So a Muslim shouldn't be an MMA fighter. You're not allowed to hit the face. I don't care how much we love Habib. He knows it too, by the way. It's haram. Fatwa or no fatwa. Can't, uh, why are they saying can't hear? Audio is not working. Oh, okay. YouTube's fine. Okay. It's only on Instagram. So... It's haram to hit the face. But at the moment that a Muslim is in that position that he's about to either be clobbered or survive, you have to root for him to survive, right? Secondly, another example of uh, this ruling. A woman commits zina. You have to stop your daughters from ever committing zina or marrying somebody that you think is a douchebag or is not suitable. So you, you, you stop them as much as you can. The moment that they do it, and it's too late now, now you have to support her. If she has a child, you have to support that child. If she's getting abused, you have to um, help her with that. Like an awful fast. What in what sense? Once you start it, you have to finish it, right? So, also another example is the state of Pakistan. Many scholars were against separating and, and making the state of Pakistan. But then they, when Pakistan came around, they supported it, right? So they said basically the, the same thing, that we were against it, but now that it exists, we have to support it. So there's a lot of issues like that. So I, was, I wasn't really a big fan of um, uh, Muslims getting involved with billions of dollars in the World Cup. But now that you see every, all these uh, hypocrites piling on them and just trying to find every possible flaw in them and just basically taking... This is a, a, a to me. It's like um, a type of a version of colonization, but it's with ideas and morals. Like you will accept our morals and ideas, whether you like it or not. So okay, so if that's where we're going, then I'm with Qatar, right? And by the way, you you think a lot of a, uh, uh, you think a lot of uh, uh, about Saudis, and we talk about them and how they got issues and all that. That's all true. But I'm telling you, some of the best, nicest people are going to be these Gulf people as individuals, right? I've never met a, a Saudi person, a regular Saudi citizen, except I could note his adab, his manners, even the youth, their adab and manners are cuts above everybody else, okay? And 
you see stuff about them. A lot of it's propaganda, okay? And set aside the whole Sadafi and that, that thing, this whole different story. That's just about scholarship. That's just about ideas. But when I meet those guys, those, those people, it's sideways though, right? Uh, Oz? Oh, okay, it's on purpose. So, so turn your phones, folks. Look, if you're on Instagram, if you're on Instagram, turn your phone. Oops, boom. If you're on Instagram, turn your phone so you get the full thing. Now we could actually, um, you got to lock your screen and turn your phone. So now we could, you'll actually see everything that we're saying. All right. So now the question becomes that you guys are making, taking this one issue of the LGBT and making it as if it's a universal human right. How universal is it when it was illegal in your country 20 years ago too? 30 years ago too? It's not universal at all. So if it's not universal, it's local. Therefore, make it your own law. That's your law. And don't come and, fo and force it on these people. All right, on the Qataris. So I'm all with them. Secondly, as I had mentioned, the hospitality and generosity of, of, of those, those uh, of Saudis and I view, when I say Saudis, that's because who I met. I did meet Qataris. To me, looking from far away, it's the same. They're the same culture in general. And I'm telling you, they're, uh, they have a lot of good qualities. Put your mic here and then uh, and just speak into it there. Come close as, as you can. Yeah. Sheikh, what do you say to people who root for people like Islam Makashev or Khabib or Muhammad Ali or Qatar out of the desire to see the Izza of Islam grow? The Izza of Islam is not in, uh, in games. The Izza of Islam is not in games, right? It's in, symbolic, I guess, emotionally when, when, when Muslims uh, win a battle or Saudi beats Argentina. <laughs> It's just, it's, it's, it's nice and fun, but the Izza of Islam is not in games. But I'll tell you what the possibly is the wisdom of this, is that Dawah in Islam is essentially, is through humans, just human interaction. And I could sort of understand the wisdom of having all the attention on these, these people and on, on the Qataris, let their manners shine through at the, in, at the local level, at the very small local level, like for example... Uh, hotel clerks, taxi drivers, uh, restaurants, right? That's where the dawa happens in my view, if you know what I mean. So there is a wisdom in having these interactions. Habib Omar always said, talks about tawsiyah da'irat al -itisad. So now that I wouldn't have done billions of dollars of games, but now that you have all these people coming in, um, um, you can start seeing the wisdoms. Likewise, I wouldn't have probably ever done Salat al in Times Square because I respect the fiqh of the idea that the Qur'an is a sacred thing. There is like naked people all over these billboards. There are literally naked people in Times Square. You know that they're allowed to do like body paint in the nude in Times Square. <coughs> so I wouldn't have done it. But now that you have done it, now that it happened, I believe there's going to be a lot of benefit. So you see that the, the idea here is that there's going to be a vast... Uh, a, a massive number of interactions between absolute people who would have nothing to do with Islam and they're going to have they're going to meet Muslims. I think there's a lot of wisdom in that. So that's that's my take on that. Let's now turn to our dua of Wednesday because don't ever forget that Wednesday, between Dhuhr and Asr, is time for it's time for dua, and we should always never we should never. Uh, leave this off again if you are on instagram turn your phone sideways so that you could now see the full picture of what we've been all putting up on youtube and this is again thanks to the um uh tech i always called him the music producer and it came true but he's not producing music he's producing something else so uh you should be able to see it now on the screen if you turn your phone sideways أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن فتحنا لك فتحا مبينا ليغفر لك الله ما تقدم من ذنبك وما تأخر ويتم نامته عليك ويهديك صراطا مستقيما وينصرك الله نصرا عزيزا وكان عند الله وجيها وجيها في الدنيا والآخرة ومن المقربين وجهت وجهي للذي فطر السماوات والأرض 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نصر من الله وفتح قريب وبشر المؤمنين يا أيها الذين آمنوا كونوا أنصار الله كما قال عيسى بن مريم للحواريين من أنصاري إلى الله قال الحواريون نحن أنصار الله الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ما الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة والرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم أعيد نفسي بالله تعالى من كل ما يسمع بأذنين ويبصر بعينين ويمشي برجلين ويبطش بيدين ويتكلم بشفتين حصنت نفسي بالله الخالق الأكبر من شر ما أخاف وأحذر من الجن والإنس وأن يحضرون عز جاره وجل ثناؤه وتقدست أسماؤه لا إله غيره اللهم إني أجعلك في نهور أعدائي وأعوذ بك من شرورهم وتحيلهم ومكرهم ومكائدهم أطفئ نار من أراد بعداوة من الجن والإنس يا حافظ يا حفيظ يا كافي يا محيط سبحانك يا رب ما أعظم شأنك وأعز سلطانك تحصنت بالله وبأسماء الله وبآيات الله وملائكة الله وأنبياء الله ورسول الله والصالحين من عباد الله حصنت نفسي بلا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم اللهم احرسني بعينك التي لا تنام وكنفنا بكنفك الذي لا يرام وارحمنا بقدرتك علينا فلا نهلك وأنت ثقتنا ورجاؤنا يا غياث المستغيثين يا غياث المستغيثين يا غياث المستغيثين يا درك الهالكين يا درك الهالكين يا درك الهالكين اكفني شر اكفنا شر كل طارق يطرق بليل أو نهار إلا طارق يطرق بخير إنك على كل شيء قدير بسم الله أرقي نفسي من كل ما يؤذي من كل حاسد الله شفائي بسم الله رقيت اللهم رب الناس أذهب الباس اشفي أنت الشافي وعافي أنت المعافي لا شفاء إلا شفاءك شفاء لا يغادر سقما ولا ألما يا كافي يا وافي يا حميد يا مجيد ارفعني كل تعب شديد واكفني من الحد والحديد والمرض الشديد والجيش العديد واجعل لي نور من نورك وعز من عزك ونصر من نصرك وبهاء من بهائك وعطاء من عطائك وحراسة من حراستك وتأييدا من تأييدك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام والمواهب العظام نسألك أن تكفينا من شر كل ذي شر إنك أنت الله الخالق الأكبر وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه والحمد لله رب العالمين ظاهرا وباطنا وعلى كل حال يا أرحم الراحمين شو so we'll minutes for dua.
سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين Alrighty, let's go and let's read and see what's going on here. Today is, uh, as we said, just a quick comment I already mentioned about my, my um, some ideas about the uh, pylon that's going on against Qatar. It's just like, it's silly that every little thing, the media is just ridiculous, to be honest with you. They're so predictable. They are so predictable. It's pathetic. Anything bad, anything Russia is going to be bad. Anything China is going to be bad. Anything, Repu- like let's say it's CNN. Anything Republican is going to be bad. Anything Qatar is going to be bad. Anything Biden is going to be good. Like how predictable can you be? You're not even faking it anymore. Like at least pretend to be objective. Like it's so predictable, it's ridiculous. All right, who do we have with us today? We got Mubashir, Hunawala. If you want a lawyer, you contact him. He's not a lawyer. I'm not saying he pimps out lawyers. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> but he, that's basically what he does, right? Uh, he, he gets lawyers who are really smart, but they don't know how to run a business, and he essentially runs their business for them. He's the Android, basically. He's the Google Android for lawyers. Put it on him. Let him, let him see. He's not really dressed for the part, but that's fine. That's the special guest today. Huh? And the other guest is the Wizard of Oz, of course. And the other guest is Murad Uthman. He's coming. No, this one. This guest. Oh, bring him to me. Bring him to me. Bring me that guy. Bring me that guy right now. Bring me that bad boy. All right. Look at who else is here today, folks. Uh, just fix that camera real really quick. Look who else we got right here. This is such a gorgeous and calm and cute looking cat. You have to give him a kiss. Okay. And he's Oz's cat who's going for shots, and that's why he's here. He's going for his shots uh, today. All right. He just wanted to. Bring your cat to work. Yeah. He basically got uh, getting his shots. So that's why he had to come with Oz a little bit higher, Oz, because the. Um, he is. When's his appointment? Right after the stream, I guess? Yeah. Okay. Good, good, good. Indonesia's earthquake, 6.9 magnitude. Big shame, big shame. Sad. Indonesia's earthquake, look at NPR, another liberal news source which I despise. Why are hundreds of people dead? Maybe they just went through an earthquake, that's why. I just can't understand. I guarantee you, they're going to bring something that Indonesia should have done, could have done, whatever. Guaranteed. These liberal news outlets are so... Unfortunately, they're the biggest ones, though. Like, when you want to read, where are you going to get your news? But they're they're just too predictable. Bodies are being pulled out. 260 are dead. Hundreds of injured are injured. Buildings have crumbled. Residents are terrified. Okay? This is all on Indonesia's main island of Jawa. Okay? It's 135 miles south of the capital, Jakarta. A lot of people are missing. Was it considered strong? Well, on Monday afternoon, it measured at 5.6. Later on, they, they changed that to 6.9. Yeah. How do you know when the earthquake or the end of time? Those three, I don't think believers will see them. There's, there's two things about that. There's earthquakes of the end of times that are that the Prophet said, said, earthquakes will increase, right? There will be an increase, and we're seeing that. But also, there's the D3 earthquakes. The believers will be all dead by that time, if I understand it correctly. Quakes of this size usually don't cause widespread damage to well-built infrastructure. But... There is not one magnitude above which damage will occur. It depends on other variables, such as the distance from the earthquake, what type of soil you're on, building construction, and other. I told you they're going to look for some flaw, right? <laughs> because they don't like that. Uh, I don't know what they're... They're implying that if they have good infrastructure, everything will be fine. Yeah. They're too poor for it. It's a very poor country. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not their fault. They just don't have the money. Yeah. Dozens of buildings were damaged in Indonesia, including the Islamic boarding school. Or, or many Islamic boarding schools, a hospital, other public facilities, 
also damaged were roads, bridges. That's like a completely useless sentence. Of course they're damaged. It's an earthquake. Just like word count for the editor or something. Why did the quake cause so much damage? They said its proximity to fault lines, the depth and the timbler uh, and buildings not being constructed using earthquake-proof methods. Even though earthquake, the earthquake was medium, well, later on, estimates put it up to 6.9. Okay. It came to close to the surface, was located inland, and was close to where people live. Okay. Said uh, a geology professor in Indonesia. The energy was large enough to cause significant damage. Did you ever see the news story, the blooper, that said that people burned in a fire because their bodies couldn't withstand the heat? <laughs> this is reminding, this, this news story, which was probably done in, in some, who's the author of this news story? Or AP, so it's not even, they're not even given an author. Some author is just stating the obvious here. The area probably has the most inland faults compared to other parts of Java. Does Indonesia usually have earthquakes like this? The country has 270 million people and is frequently stuck by earthquakes. Volcanic eruptions, tsunamis. Blaming on Indonesia. <laughs> Wait a second, tsunamis? There was one tsunami, if I remember correctly. Unless they're talking about little minor ones that don't get reported and didn't uh, bring waves on sea. Okay. There is a Pacific Basin called the Ring of Fire. Wow, Ring of Fire. That's, I guess, um, isn't that the latest Amazon multi-billion dollar a botch up that they did, that they put together? The graphics are really good, but the storyline's really too complicated with too many characters. That's called the Ring of Fire, right? Amazon's uh, Narnia, basically. Is it Narnia or is it Lord, Lord of the of, It's Lord of the Rings, sorry. They, they messed with the source material to make it Narnia. So everyone's gay now? Yeah. yeah it's sort of more true. or less, I think, yeah, it's inclusive. I don't know. I haven't Where the author was totally against this nonsense. Like the original author of Narnia and Lord of the Rings. These are hardcore Christians yeah. who who are not all about this stuff. Apparently Harry Potter's author is also like She's out. No, she's canceled. Yeah. No, she's canceled. Yeah. She's completely canceled. So that Habib, come on in. All right, let's see what the BBC has anything useful to say. Besides telling us that um, there was a lot of damage done in an earthquake, which, uh, what did we expect? A, re a redesign of, of the city as a result of the earthquake? Useless uh, article there. Sheffy, you said there's no Aziza in games. No, there's no Aziza in games. But what if someone learns about Islam because their favorite athlete was like Muslim or something? Like a lot of young men are but watching MMA, I feel these days uh, as a reaction to what's going on in broader. Trends. It should, should basically be that by it. If anyone loves Habib, it's because his character is special. If you love Muhammad Ali, it's because his character is special. And the boxing was just a way to push him up, I guess, right, and get him to be visible. But Islam does not gain Izza by Islam. The religion does not gain its Izza because it has champions in sports, right? So the sports may be a way for the people to see him. Right? Murad, come in. The sports may be a way for people, huh? For, for a way to people to see him, but that's not why what it's special for. Like, why he's special is because of his character. There's a lot of uh, boxers that are Muslim and wrestlers that are Muslim who are not great examples, right? So they didn't have the impact that these people had, right? So, that, and, and for example, if we had. If we had a country, right? Let's say we got Rhode Island somehow. We ended up with Rhode Island. Huh? Yeah, we'll take it. We'll start some. We got to start somewhere, right? Let's say we got Rhode Island. We're not going to spend our spending. The world's attention may be on sports. That, to me, is not going to be where I feel like we need to succeed. I don't care if the whole world is influenced by that. Public perception is influenced by that. That's not what I'm going to be care what I'm going to care about. I wouldn't care about that. If I had leftover money, then maybe I'll care about that. But what I'm going to care about is actually what matters in real life, right? Not athletics. And do you want to raise a generation, all they care about is running and throwing balls? That's not what the prophet wanted. 
right? You could do that for fun. You could do that for exercise to stay out of trouble. But training eight hours a day, you think the prophet would be pleased that that happened, that someone's doing that? Wake up first thing in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, run, and then start throwing the ball into the hoop, kicking the ball into the net. Eight hours a day of this? Break for salah. Come back. Kick more balls into nets. This is what... So we have to have a perspective of it, right, for, for this. It's much lower for us. That's why the Prophet, he forbade such games, by the way, for money. Money, prizes, and awards. Our Medicaid method is pretty strict on this. The only time prizes and awards and money can be given out to win a game is if it's a war game done by the military. So the military, the soldiers don't get bored, right? And so people could say, oh, I want to be a soldier too. Because soldier, you can get rich as a soldier. So horseback riding, archery, in our day and age, will be guns, shooting, flying planes, all that stuff. And you win awards for this. Well, maybe not flying planes because you're putting the soldiers at risk, on a greater risk than anything else. Uh, but any type of game that is used in war, right, or, or a skill that is used in war, that you can make a game out of it, have a league for it, but the players, they got to be soldiers, Right? You're not doing this and then going home. He's a soldier, right? So this is incentive for people to be soldiers and part of the military. People say, wow, you have a militarized society. Hold on, are you a Westerner saying that? Shut your mouth then, right? You have the most militarized society, right? Yeah. No, I would be very happy if someone said, wow, your, your society is so militarized. I, okay, good. That's why you're not messing with us, right? That's why no one messes with the United States. That's why no one messed with England for all those centuries, Right? And, then, and that's why no one messes with Israel. No one could go bomb Israel today. They bomb the lights out of you with all of the technology they have, right? And then they say, oh, you're militarized. No, so you guys come, the, the Westerners will come to go to these Eastern countries and preach, turn the other cheek. But you're the slapper, right? <laughs> you're preaching us to turn the other, sleek, the other cheek, but you are the slapper. So uh, it, that's, why they, that's why they preach that. So, I don't want to hear anything that the Western society has to say anymore. I used to actually care what they had to say because I felt that they're a society of winners. They succeed. They know something about life. Of course, we know they know anything about Dean, right? But they, I, I used to think they still know how to win at life. And so, it's like, there's rules of the dunya and there's rules of the akhirah. The principles of the akhirah, of the Quran, are, are far superior than the principles of the dunya. But their law of life is that you still will not succeed unless you apply the principles of the dunya too out of adab with the asbab we, our, our manners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that we we apply the asbab he created okay the means cause and effect that he created that's adab with Allah we apply them we respect it we we take it and it's and it's a wonder to us it's amazing because these asbab they reveal his knowledge like he created with a system with knowledge with 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 predictable Things like all gravity is the same at this level, right? Um, certain things are just like you learn the system that Allah created and you can harness electricity. Learn the system, you could do a surgery in a human being, right? Amazing stuff. So it's to me, it's all. I love the world of Esbeb. You are seeing the creation, the creator's handiwork right here. It's not as some Sufiya may think, oh, it's just Esbeb. This is t- give it Adab basically and move on. No, Esbeb are, are amazing. Allah's creation is through this. So you should honor it. You should love it. You should act upon it knowing that this is a reflection of his, his creation, his knowledge, his wisdom. So the West, Western countries, any country that succeeds, Allah Ta'ala makes them love the asbab. If Allah wants a country to succeed, he makes them love asbab. They may think incorrectly about it. They may think that this is the only way to succeed. That's their problem. But they, he makes them love the asbab and follow the asbab, and act upon the asbab. So I used to think that the Western countries, like, they got, there's something we could learn from them, right? Uh, I go to Egypt, it's a mess. I come here, things are working, right? There's got to be a reason. This is not random. It's not because they're Americans and these are Egyptians, because 500 years ago, things were reversed, right? You go to the Mamluk times, things were great, and you come here, and it was a mess, like... It wasn't something to be that anyone would want to be part of. And then fast forward. The Greeks had it. Well, who wants to go to Greece now? 
the 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 uh, er, it passes through. So there has to be something they're doing. I actually almost retract that now. You're self-destructive. Like your enemy has planted see- ideas in your head, and you're completely self-destructed. That all you have your 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 whole focus is on things that are destructive to your nation. So I no longer care or have any respect even for anything that these Western co- uh, 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 pundits have to say. At least in like a in like a linguist uh, linguistic sense, could you say that this is like istidraj, like the way that America is like just. It's, it's, it's the drudge. Yeah. It's totally it's the drudge. And I think soon that we're going to actually start seeing the leveling down. So um, are you familiar with uh, economics in the world? Yeah. So you, you know that the BRIC nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, Nigeria wants to be part of this. A lot of other countries, Turkey wants to be part of this. They're putting together a currency that's gold-backed. They don't trust in the current system that we're in. It's like chaotic. Chaotic. I'm really interested in this because if that takes on, right, it's going to be fought big time. It, it, it's showing that people are like moving away from the dollar. Once people move away from the dollar, the, the value of the American opinion is going to dip, right? And if they were using their opinion for something good, I would lament that, right? But all they're doing is exporting their, their lack of, their, their, their version of morals, which to me is you haven't even seen it in your own country for 30 years. You haven't seen the result of this for 20 years. Like there, you haven't even experimented with this. Why are you, uh, subhanAllah, why are you, you're exporting something, you don't even know the result of it. So to me, they've become a destructive force. By, and this, that, that's, that was the, the lead in with the World Cup, is how they're um, preaching and promoting this stuff when it's a complete destructive force. And um, it's to me, it's ideological colonization. That's what they're trying to do. And wake up. Nobody, people don't all believe what you believe. You don't get that. What you think is universal. It's universal to you, not anyone else. All right. 271 people killed, many children, 40 missing, hundreds injured. Back to the Indonesia earthquake. Legs were buried under the rubble, says a 14-year-old, and he was pulled out by his friend Zulfiqar, who later died after himself becoming trapped. So he saved someone and died as a teenager. Inshallah, he's shaheed. These are the affairs of the Ummah. May Allah Ta'ala make him... This this friend Zulfiqar saved, at least saved his legs from losing enough blood that they would have to amputate them. And then he himself became trapped. So may Allah make him a shaheed. Here we are reading about him. We don't even know who this teenager is. Just a teenager, right? And here we are reading about him. Um, may Allah give him Jannah. That's the whole purpose of affairs of the Ummah is to see these types of things happening. 22,000 houses have become damaged. 58,000 people are homeless. Seeking refuge now. Okay. Victims were crushed or trapped. Walls and roofs caved in. It all happened so fast. Um, appraisal told the news agency. Most of the casualties are children because it was 1 p.m. and they were at school and certain the fault lines were under schools. The earthquake, which struck at a shallow depth of only six miles under the earth, and it had over a dozen aftershocks. So it was one big one and then a dozen aftershocks. And the village of Siberium, a family was trying to retrieved the body of their eldest son, a 28-year-old man who had been crushed when other levels of the home fell on him. Rescuers are struggling to sift through the rubble. We have to dig through the concrete, the second floor. We have to get through concrete. A 48-year-old resident said, told Reuters that she survived after being crushed beneath a child. Two of my kids survived. I dug them up. Two others I brought here, and one is still missing. She says through tears, many bodies are lying in the hospital grounds. It's very crowded. Okay. Uh, in one area, victims held cardboard sign saying that she needs a home and she needs food. The president, Joko Widodo, visited the, the remote disaster zone on Tuesday and he was pictured with responders. He says, 
My instruction is to prioritize evacuating victims that are still trapped under the rubble. Hundreds of police and other rescuers take part of the effort, blah, blah, blah. Save the Children has said that 80 schools have been damaged. Now, this, uh, the location of this is massive. 80 schools, because how far are 80 schools going to be? Like 80 schools? Like North Brunswick and South Brunswick and East Brunswick and New Brunswick don't have 80 schools. So how... Children are terrified and we need to get food, water, shelter and ensure they're not separated from their parents. This is a big problem, connecting the kids to the parents. It's chaos. So this is all on the ring of fire. Give it like a worse name. It's like a cool name, unfortunately, right? The ring of fire. Uh, Tectonic activity in the Pacific. The country has a history of devastating earthquakes. All right, let's go to five pillars and see what they have to say. Uh, Oz, you have any comments on this? Sheikh mm. Murad, any comments? I'm looking at it now. Mm. It's uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ummati hadhi ummatun maqomatun laysa alayha azabun fil akhirati azabuha fil dunya al fitanu wa zalazilu wa qatan. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, This people of mine is one to which mercy is shown. They will have no punishment in the next world, but its punishment in this world will be trials, earthquakes, and being killed. Mm. And this is in Sunan Abu Dawood. You everyone heard that? Amazing hadith. Allah. I'll say it again. Yeah. Uh, nobody heard it. Ummati hadhi ummatun qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an Abi Musa. Ummati hadhi ummatun marhumatun laysa alayhi adabun fil akhirati. So the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith narrated by Abu Musa that this people of mine is one to which mercy is shown. It will have no punishment in the next world, but its punishment in this world will be trials, earthquakes, and being killed. And this is in the Sunan of Abu Dawood. Amazing, amazing hadith. So if someone looks at we analyze, a, analyze any event. We never analyze an event as a Muslim without having eternal uh, infinity as part of the analysis. Right, you could take this and put it up too. Or that way, yeah. Okay. You have to always have in your analysis that there's the akhirah is involved. So hardships of this life you may never see the uh, value of it in this life or the benefit of it but you will see it in the akhirah at the very least all right um Shady, i remember yeah. a year ago i think it was thanksgiving you gave a khutbah about uh, civilizations that last yeah and the two features of those civilizations mm-hmm. and earlier in this talk you said how the west uh, has become preoccupied with things that are destroying their own society. Yeah, they they not preoccupied, they love them. And they're promoting things that destroy their own society. Uh, what would you advise Muslims in the West to focus on to preserve their own civilization? Uh, study what the West is doing and do the opposite. When it comes to morals, when it comes to how they have family life, be very aware of how they have their family lives. I'm saying in general, not everyone, but there is a clear general trend. Or how it's portrayed in movies. And, and explicitly or uh, uh, intentionally, be intentional about it, doing the opposite. So dad's in every movie is a buffoon. Daughter rolls her eyes at him while she's face t- texting some dude, some kid in school, rolls her eyes at her dad and walks away, right, while he's still talking to her. Uh, study, be, be aware and study of everything that they, of what they're portraying because what's 90% of the true of uh, time, the opposite is what's true. The opposite is what's good. There's, it's almost as if nobody realizes here that someone is some group, or whether you want to say it's Iblis, or, but Iblis is not going to come down. He's going to use human beings. Someone, some group, or multiple groups, have descended upon the United States for the past 60, 70 years and are implanting ideas that are completely self-destructive, right? And it's just a matter of time b- before I think that we are just being propped up. Eventually, we're just going to be propped up by China. 
right? Because there's they have too much investment here. So they're, 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 the only reason that, that there hasn't been a war and a complete takeover is, is because China has too much investment. Otherwise, they would have finished you, right? And they don't want this leadership of the world uh, responsibility. They, they're happy to pass that over to America, and, uh, and they don't want that. They're, they're in for the economics. They're just in for the economics. And it's not to say that Ch- the Chinese are any better, by the way. But the U.S. It is no longer some Christian nation that we could say, or at least they're Christian. They're not even that. They're way beyond that. And that's been dead a long time ago. Hey, Murad, remember yeah. in Tuhfat al Murid, like in the beginning, in the, in the Muqaddimah, when he, he says those two words, and he said that this word of, uh, I think it was Adama or something, came before the other one because the humans were left to themselves. What was it? Yeah, Adam when... Uh, yeah. What's that? Adam or Jad, so he, Imam, the Imam mentioned in the beginning that Allah, he says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who has the capability of the Adam of, of making things of, of making things non existent and existent. Of course, yeah. And why was exist why so the author could have said Allah has the power to create and annihilate. Yeah. But he said Allah Ta'ala has the power to annihilate and create. Yeah. Because the natural you could say the, the default position of creation if Allah Ta'ala did not will for it to exist as annihilation, non-existence. So he mentioned non-existence first. So what's the wisdom? The wisdom is that naturally, if, if, if things, if, if we were, if, if it wasn't for the power, for Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala creating us, we would never have came into being. Yeah. So you could say our state, us going into non-existence, is going to, is like, you know, quote unquote, the natural state we are, we, we would be in. Yeah, if that's a natural Allah, state. Yeah. That's the natural state if it wasn't for Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala creating us. Yeah. Like the default is the, the default is the default is non existence, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And also for the reader, too, yeah. he he's reading this while existing, yeah. So it makes sense for him to, to, to mention uh, the mention of non existence, yeah. too. Also in the Quran, uh, he, he also meant Mawt and Hayah comes yeah. first, Mawt comes yeah. first. Then Allah said, when Allah said, <laughs> 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 like yeah. everything on it is. Fan, like fan disappearing, disappearing. So what did the scholars yep. say? That means if Allah Subhanahu wa Taala did not will, it would mm-hmm. simply annihilate. It would simply yeah. go out. Of if he's not keeping it as yeah, it's not being sustained by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, it will just not, not exist. Al Qayyum. Al Qayyum. He's, sustain he's sustaining it at all times. Because not only did he create it, but he also sustains it. Yeah. Subhanallah. So unlike the so the so the deists believe that he created, they say that he made a watch, and it ticks on its own now. That's what the deists say. They, they believe in God, but uh, they say that he created the world, set the laws. They said he left it. And, and then like spin the top, like a top or a spin or a dreidel type of thing, spun it, and it's spinning on its own now. Right? That's what the deists said. That was the, it was a very popular idea at the time of um, the 1700s, 1800s. Some of the founding fathers were deists, yeah. they said. Yeah, most of, most of them were deists. They basically said, we believe in God. We, there is God, right? Uh, but God made the world, and he made the laws of the world, and he just left it. Which means that we can make our own law. right? We make our own law. He just made natural law. That's what they believed in, these natural laws of the, of the creation. So uh, we have another uh, article here from Five Pillars. This is, today we're covering the affairs of the Ummah. Five Pillars has an article called Muslim peoples don't feel safe at Wood Green Academy. Okay, I'm not a fan of the language, to be honest with you. It's the language of the weak. <laughs> right? I'll just say they're infuriated. Right? Terrorism. Five Pillars understands that over 50 Muslim students did not attend Wood Green Academy in in Wensbury yesterday, after pupils were disciplined. They were disciplined following a visit to the school by gay Muslim activist Khaqan Qureshi. You, you guys saw this article? No, I didn't see it yet. First time I'm reading about it. At, uh, you want to read it to us, this man? <laughs> at a meeting at the Medina Education Trust on Sunday, these got their eyes are all laughing because they shared it and talked about it, apparently, and I uh, didn't see that part of the uh, WhatsApp group. All right. So 160 people attended this meeting, and they said that their children felt fearful about going back. Why this language? I hate this language. Fearful about going back. No, infuriated. I'm not afraid. This is 
I, I understand their position, but it's it's wokey language. They it, have to use those terminologies. Yeah, you, you have to turn uh, exactly. You have to use that terminology to get. That's why I remember when I said it would be hilarious to have uh, a mafia, a movie about the mafia, where these mafia guys, but they're now dealing with the woke generation, yeah. right? When Saddam comes back. Oh yeah, yeah that's, that's what, what I said. said. I said Saddam comes back. He wasn't really killed all this time. He was just in the jail, but he comes back, takes over Iraq. But all the Iraqi kids are these woke kids, right? And instead of having to deal with like gangster with gangster. They're all emos, actually, if you see them. Yeah. yeah Instead of gang, gangster with gangster, yeah. it's like uh, he's dealing now with people who are complaining that they're afraid and they're crying and they're victims. And he's like, what kind of enemy do I have now? I don't know how to deal with this type of person. And then Saddam's wife starts sympathizing with them, right? Mm -hmm. His daughter-in-laws are all sympathizing with them because these gangsters, they're not trained to deal with, uh, with sympathy as, in, as in a weapon as a weapon. And that's what it is. Sympathy in the West is now a weapon, right? That's making a bit some noise if you can resist. Yeah. So it's a weapon now. And they're, they're not used to that. They're used to dealing with some tough guy. Anyway, they, want, they don't want to go back to school. After their normative Islamic beliefs on Ligbitic issues were challenged by Mr. Qureshi, who said, it's okay to be gay and Muslim. And the Quran does not consider homosexuality to be a sin. These people are obsessed, oh, and all we're doing is responding. They're obsessed with the issue, but we have to respond, right? We're not going to just let them talk about everything. Them talking, and we're not going to. Mufti Abdul Abdul Wahid or Abdul Muhid, I don't know, told parent, "What divine name is that? Abdul Muhid? Muhid? Or maybe that's it's a, Muhid is not one of the divine How's names. How's it spelled? M U H I D." Maybe that's his last name. His name is Abdul Rahman Muhid or something like that. Anyway. He said the community is angry and emotional at their, at their treatment by the school and is now concerned about safeguarding issues, but needs to complain about the in incident in a respectful and determined way. So they try to colonize your countries. Un understand it very well. Listen. They try to colonize your countries. They couldn't. The airplane was invented. They didn't expect this. The airplane brought over a hundred of these Muslims into your countries. That's a problem for them. Nothing was a problem until the population started to grow and grow and grow, and these Muslims keep having kids. Oh, shoot, we don't have kids. The population is going like this now. Germany, England, France, America, not so, right? Germany, England, France, the populations keep going like this. Eventually, it's going to be, by the end of this century, maybe close to 50-50. They will be Muslim countries just by population. Okay, So what's the next route of attack? Poison the well of Islam. So that, yeah, say you're Muslim. No problem. Hold the Quran up. Put it on yourself. We'll respect it. We'll put the crescent up too. But poison it. So it's not really actually Islam. Poison it by making people believe in something that's a clear contradiction to their book. I think that once the level of Muslims become so high that it really is a threat, mm -hmm. We're going to start seeing either atrocities being committed it has in, to be. in Europe it has or to mass be. expulsion or something. It has because to be. right now they're seeing this as a faraway issue yeah. and they never thought it would get this bad. Yeah. And we're going to see you know, the gloves come off mm -hmm. and the true colors of uh, these countries. Will the, be I, I think it's going to be France. It's going to be the, one, yeah. the, like, the, what the Holocaust happened in Germany. The next century it's going to be Muslims in France. They're going to have to. Yeah. Right? They're trying to poison the well of Islam and just be secular Muslim. Fine, no problem right fake just be like the way we are christians they're not real christians you can make a, 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 a play about jesus being gay and stuff like that and the, and there there's nothing happens you're not real christians then my in my opinion you guys can stomp around the bible and, and make fun of christianity all day long and you don't react it's not in your heart then it's just in your in your in like, your name like if a muslim saw say nice being mocked we, this, that's a fight this is kufr this, this, this makes us angry it's a fight but like to them like there's you don't see any protests you don't see any nothing condemnation like for when they uh, no reaction I saw, I saw even there's like this children's book that was trying to make like an LGBT portrayal and stuff yeah and I'm like no nothing no letters no nothing nothing like, like there's there, there, there has to be a fight sometimes the, there, there has to be a fight okay so to me that's what they want to make the Muslims into that I'm telling you they will fail they will fail. And one of the reasons they will fail 
is the influx of Syrian refugees everywhere. These Syrian refugees, they don't have your mentality. They have the dua of their grandparents. These people are very special people. They're from their loins and from their children will come big ulama and awliya and duats. We're rooting for them, right? And they're going to spread all throughout Europe. And, and our ummah is not, you, you can't uh, treat it the way you treated the Christians. Where a French Christian gets his Christianity from France. He doesn't go make a pilgrimage and get, and get revived by going to Rome or something like that. They don't have this concept. We have a global ummah. So you could be a completely, your mind's all messed up as a Muslim. Someone plucks you out, throws you into Umrah or Hajj. It fixes your head, right? You come back and your beliefs are straight now. But we mix, we interact, right? So it's not going to work. The gloves are going to have to come off. That's my opinion. It's going to be France. They're going to do terrible things in my opinion because it's already in their heart. Are we going to, does anyone deny that the hatred is in their heart and it's growing? That hatred, it's got to go somewhere, right? going to come out so let's see what he says he said the whole community is proud of their six formers i guess that means sixth grade who understand their dean and they question mr Qureshi's assertions okay change his name from Qureshi to to uh something else well, some of the Qureshis were bad too uh, from, from yeah he was safe that a community group has been set up to support Muslim parents and children. Mufti Muhid added that some pupils had been treated differently by the school after the incident. What happened to freedom of speech? They were put in isolation and suspended. Why? That's why the diversity of the West is such a fraud. It's diversity of skin color and ethnic background and food and clothes and all that stuff. It's never a diversity of actual beliefs. They're tolerant until you disagree with them. Yeah, they're tolerant on the, the avenues to get to the same result. That's the same source and the same result. But take your own avenue. You want to go uh, a different cultural route, different expression, all that's fine. But when you actually say, well, wait a second, I actually don't agree with your premise or your conclusion, there's no diversity. There's no tolerance. Other speakers at the meeting said Muslim children had been treated with no respect by the school. I go back to saying that we're the problem. Why are we in there? countries in the first place it's because our grandparents lost wars quite simply why did our grandparents lost wars they stopped obeying Allah in general as a general population not individually the great grandparents stopped obeying Allah you lost wars you lost wars you go begging to these people working for these people and by the way we have a ruling in the Sharia it's forbidden to have a lowly job under a kafir like a Muslim cannot be the janitor for a kafir when I go in Algeria, it's all street sweepers. Uh, I mean, uh, London. It's all Algerian sweet, street sweepers back when I was there. Every street sweeper, five out of, seven out of ten is a Muslim, Algerian. That's, what they, that's the work they do. Is this not khudlan? Is this not khizi? Dhul. It's dhul, khidlan, khizi, whatever word you want to call it. It's humiliation. Why are you humiliated? And these brothers, it's not them that's humiliated. Your forefathers, okay, they disobeyed Allah Ta'ala. They wanted to be secular. They wanted to, they forgot Allah Ta'ala. Look at the situation that your grandkids are in. Why were, let's say, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz in a lofty situation? And all the Abbasids, even the Umayyads, why are, conquering this, conquering that, why are they in a lofty situation? Because your great-grandparents obeyed Allah and lifted it. And, they, and the reward was so much, it trickled down five, six, eight, ten generations. Tsunami of reward, of honor, of is. Well, likewise, if you mess around with the sewer and it explodes, it's going to explode for generations. And now you have a Muslim, and these guys, uh, these poor Algerian guys, cleaning the streets of England. You're cleaning the streets of a country that <laughs> spent the last 400 years, 300 years, going and sucking the blood of your grandparents and you're cleaning their street. Is that not khidlan and humiliation that's the result so the result when the when, when a sewer explodes we all get dirty mm -hmm. not just the one who blew up the sewer and that's exactly what's happening here so you have to understand and have a tafsir for what's going on here shouldn't even be in these schools shouldn't even be in these countries that's, that's the truth i'm not saying that i'm going to leave because these people are all born here so they themselves are innocent but in the general large sphere of things it all goes back to that 
We're going to be treated as second-class citizens in the future, one speaker said. You already are. Wake up. No offense. We're, we're, all, we're, we're supporting these people, but you already are a second-class citizen. Nobody cares about your narrative. All right, let's bring a Muslim... Uh, uh, let's bring in... If we're bringing in narratives, bring in the Islamic narrative on, on gender. Bring in the Orthodox Jewish narrative on gender. Bring in the Catholic narrative on gender. Bring in the Hindu. Do they have a narrative on gender? Do they have a narrative on sexuality? I think they're pretty conservative, Hindus, right? For now, at least. A relative of a pupil who was part of the school debate said this, the school had let Muslim pupils down and silenced them. And a parent of a pupil who took part in the debate said the school discriminated against people who were just standing up for their Islamic beliefs. Parent, parents wishing to complain can do so here, here, and here. They give you some links. Five Pillars contacted Wood Green Academy asking them about the parents and children's concern. Now, is this a public school? Or is it a... I think it's a public school. Oh, it's a public school. So a private school, you can... You can you could say what you want. Yeah, yeah. You, can, you can specify who comes in and who doesn't. Yeah. You could also say, you, by, you can announce that we're a woke school. Right? You could say, we're, we're progressive. Whatever word that they want to use. We want to prepare our students for modern life in Britain, says Wood Green Academy. We developed their understanding on, of the fundamental British values. Really? Is that one of the British values? Is to be gay? No? Since when? <laughs> what queen? Like, go back. This queen that just died, when she was like 50 years old, it didn't even, wasn't a thing. Right? When she was 60 years old, this thing wasn't even a thing. Right? They, they, they always put it off as a universal, uh, whatever. And then they rewrite history. Universal rights. Oh, they dig deep and finding, oh. It says, this guy loved his friend. Exactly. And then they'll Boom. see that, oh, love. That's it. Yeah. Boom. He wasn't married. This, this, this uh, tyrant, this dictator, this king, he never married. This inventor, let's make a movie out of him, uh, right, for him, and then insinuate that he was gay with absolutely no historical record. Or even, what's that, Ahmed? They've even tried, tried to do that with, like, Malcolm X. Like, wow. Yeah. Bro, that guy, his name is not Malcolm too. I can't remember his name. But Habib Omar came. Habib Omar was here, right? And this was 2010. The week, the, the weekend that they were going to do the visit to the grave of Malcolm X with Habib Omar bin Hafil, that book, uh, the tour was set to begin. He was going to go on all the media tour for the mammoth behemoth book about, a new biography about Malcolm X. But a firestorm erupted because he's asserting that Malcolm X, he had many affairs of committed zina. He had many affairs and even insinuated he may have been gay. Okay? Everyone was furious about this. And now, next day, he's supposed to be on all these media tour and blah, blah, blah. Okay? He died suddenly. The guy who wrote the book? He died just like that never went on the tour and the book really because there was no publicity tour flopped he died the hadith of Bidaya yeah where he declares uh, yeah <laughs> subhanallah now I didn't even remember his name his name is not known still Roots the, the Roots author Alex Haley that's the biography that everyone still goes to yeah. I hope that book becomes no, and, Nassim um, and Siyah Alhamdulillah people are doing good work um, you know even in the uh, because a lot of people, they want Malcolm X to seem like this black nationalist uh, Marxist. Yeah. This is the issue. So, for example, the work that Hamza Raza is doing right now, it's to extract Malcolm X and to show that he was actually a Sunni Muslim yeah. with a Sunni Muslim theology as well, mm. not a Marxist theology. Yeah. So it's good that we have people in the space yeah. that are recognizing and you know, defending his legacy. Yeah, it totally could have been that at some point he... he uh, yeah, that's that's his name, Marable Manning. I thought it was Malcolm something. Marable Manning. That's the name of the book. Thank you for. That's the author, and it's Nessian Mansiya. This book, yeah. all that work, and he has these these absurd insinuations, absurd theories. Okay, and that book is Nessian Mansiya. Forgotten, and you even forgot that you forgot it. So these people now they're saying that these are fundamental British values. Democracy, rule of law, liberty, mutual respect, tolerance. We promote... E so why don't you tolerate Sunni theology? 
Like, why don't you actually have someone to come into the school to talk about Iman and Kufr? Bring Sheikh Murad to the school, talk about perennialism, to talk about, bring uh, all these other, bring Muhammad Hijab into like, the schools. Like how, You're, he's in England, right? How, I'm just saying, like, how is, like, I, I don't understand, like, how is bringing, like, a, a gay apostate into the school, like, a way to teach British values? Like, what of does course. that have to do? Yeah. Like, how, that there's no connection. Like, no you, connection. You can't defend it by saying it's, like, British values. It's yeah. just there's, there's no connection. It's, like, it, it's just words that they're saying. But truly, the promotion, it is a poison, it's a poison yeah. pill in Islam. That's all it is. Also, the way that they approach these things is so cowardly. Yeah. Um, I'll give you an example. This uh, account, Libs of TikTok. Right. I love them. Yeah. I well, think what are they, they called? Libs of TikTok. Libs yeah. of TikTok. Um, I'm pretty sure they got banned recently. Oh, um, by who? Uh, TikTok? Or Twitter? They've, they've been TikTok. suspended a couple times. Yeah, they've been suspended. Um, but what do people say? All the guy is doing, or it's actually a lady. It's a, it's it's a, a woman, woman out of Brooklyn, too, yeah. of all places. All, she's not out of Kansas or all something. All she's doing is just reposting the videos. That's already these, public. Yeah, that are already public. But what they call it now, you yeah. know, I was like really digging deep on this stuff. They call it stochastic terrorism now. Stochastic Be- terrorism. So what, what does stochastic mean? It means non predictable. <coughs> because they're saying that this lady is inciting violence by, we don't know how the violence is happening. Hence the word stochastic. Uh-huh. But in some way, she's causing violence against them. They're basically saying that the Colorado shooting yeah. happened as a result of libs of TikTok. Wow. They're so scared of their own ideology. Yeah. All the account is doing, all the platform is doing, is just publicizing the information that's already out there. It's already public. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> that's that's all that's happening. Like telling people about like drag queen events for kids. Exactly. And like, yeah. like it's, already, it's already there on the social media. It's yeah. not like... And there's no editorializing. Yeah. But these people are—they know their ideology is so toxic and so disgusting to the fitra yep. that they themselves feel like shame of it, yeah. and they want to hide it. They're so underhanded in the way that they work. I'm telling you, the end result of all this is that the left will will be for 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 at some point they will be accepting and they will uh, shove under the rug abuse of kids. Eventually, that's where it's going. It's they will, they will it's, be like the Catholic Church. It's definitely like I, I've told people like. There's no other group that has this much interest in children. Yeah. Like, no, nobody's inviting, nobody's, like, trying to, like, even even if, like, conservatives, like, anybody, nobody's, like, having, like, like ideological-infused gatherings for kids. Yeah. Right? By but people targeting? who don't have kids. Huh? By people who don't have kids and yeah. can't have kids. Yeah. Like, why is it that they have so much interest in children when nobody else is doing the same thing like not even the opposite camp is like trying to get to the kids like they're trying to get to the kids why can 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 you imagine like let's say if you came in or habib or anyone who came in and you're not related to anyone let's say in the in this area your your family's up north right you came in and said uh sammy kadovic i would like to run the children's program yeah what children program oh the the little kids like for uh, first grade second grade third grade like, well, Def- just yeah. by you asking that question, yeah, weird. you would never have a, a red flag. say in the community ever again. That's a red flag. It's a red flag. Yeah. Yet these people who don't have kids, can't have kids, won't have kids, shouldn't have kids, may Allah never let them have kids. You know I mean? They all want to be involved in elementary school now. Yeah. yeah. Pre-K, elementary, kindergarten. It's so suspicious. It is it's so... Suspicious. It's definitely suspicious. <laughs> You, you, I'm telling you, they're going to be worse than the Catholic Church. The, the Catholic Church... Yeah, that's what they say. Oh, look at your... Ch-. They'll say it to the Catholics, like, look at your church when the yeah. Pope's with them. But like, like, like you said, you're, that's, it's one thing. Like you said, it's one thing if someone does something behind closed doors. It's yeah. another thing if they're trying to make it openly acceptable. And Both exactly. are wrong, of course. And the Catholic like, Church, it's, it's something that, yes, we want to say they got a few bad apples, fine. But they all covered it up. They, everyone, they shift in these priests around. None of these priests got humiliated, fired for the. They shoved it under the. I guarantee you, that's what's going to start happening in the schools, right? Because there's going to be all sorts of abuses to kids, all right? And and they're and they're all the left is going to. That's going to be their legacy, is messing with kids. Hey, Ryan, you got a video for us or something? This is the video. This is the video. All right, let's hear it. Like we can. You know, the beginning we can skip it because it's just the students roasting the teacher. Oh, wait, that's a good part. We want to see that. The, good, the, the real good part is that okay. the yeah. their, their British teacher, yeah. he just go, he's yelling at the students who are doing it and just nonsense. Okay. Like, it just makes no sense. But let's we'll start it. from the beginning. All right, let's hear this. Can we hear it? I hope so. I think so. Switch it to the 
Okay, yeah, I think there's an issue with. Yeah. Logan. The suspense. <laughs> Very slowly. Is, is my voice still projecting through? If I hit the desktop audio, uh, unmute it on the next one. And then the next one will be like this. This? Yeah, just hit that. All right, where's the audio now? Do you agree that being gay and right, this is wrong? Now we're talking about that. So you awesome. just, yeah, you said it's our own, your own journey. Why is he advocating this to young people, young Muslims who don't, are still learning their religion? You're advocating the wrong thing. Do you agree that being gay and this is wrong? Now we're not that. So you can't be gay. Now 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 you can't be gay. So in order to get answers for myself, I read the Quran, I read the Bible to see what does it say about homosexuality. And as far as I'm concerned, in my research, there isn't anything in the Quran that says homosexuality is a sin. And so for me, you say there's nothing wrong with you know the story about homosexuality. Yeah. You know, I think that's not discrimination. Right, you need to come to my office. No, I'm not going anywhere. No, I I've been through that. No, we're not. It's yeah. not homophobic. That no. is homophobic. You're allowed no. to gay with no. no. I will not have this conversation. Just tell lies. Shut up and listen. I don't care. I've had enough. We live in a diverse and tolerant country. Sounds very diverse. <laughs> we are tolerant of different religions. 21 years ago, a group of Muslims smashed airplanes into buildings to kill thousands of people. Oh At that stage, people stood up and said, no, we must not condemn Muslims for what a few have done. Because we are a tolerant society. Oh, he's humiliating himself. And that means, okay, I'm, we may not like some things that you say, but you do have the right to say them. But tolerance is two ways. We respect the right of people to worship the way they want. But in this country, we also expect people to allow people to live the way they want. So let them disagree too. Why can't, so you can't disagree? <laughs> so you either, it's either, a, so it's either agree or nothing? I love that. At that clip, I'm going to clip that out. Mm -hmm. Yelling at the top of his lungs <laughs> to be tolerant, <laughs> right? So why aren't you tolerant of their opinion? It's the British right? who also instigated. They're the tolerant until you disagree with them. That's it. Yeah, you're, they're tolerant until you dis tolerance has been a Trojan horse to be accepted, whether you like it or not. These people, man, unreal. It was the British instigating this whole LGBTQ thing with the the bands in the World Cup. The bands, yeah, the British. Uh, what what is the deal with? Uh, the player who did that, Harry Kane, what's his deal? Did he get a yellow card for that? Well, I think uh, Qatar is like, you're not only going to be ejected from the stadium, you're going to be deported from the country. And no player I decided love that. To, no, no player decided to go forward. That they're all taking That's jump. great. <laughs> Deport them. So BBC got mad and turned off their broadcast. It turned off the broadcast. Yeah. They, they didn't the broadcast the opening ceremony. Qatar put all this time and effort. Don't and broadcast it then. They're, they're the ones that are losing out. By the way, are just going to go somewhere else. Anymore. The, the BBC is not how the Indians get their news anymore. The Canadians get their news. It's not the old days where the BBC mattered that much. Univision. Your little island yeah. in England. That's that's the only people who are watching. By the way, does anyone even watch stuff on TV? People watch it on <laughs> no, YouTube, right? <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay, so your ideological colonization is not being tolerated and it's being caught. Uh, um, it's too obvious. So we encourage our students to engage with views. That's what they're doing, engaging. I love that kid who said, Astaghfirullah. <laughs> <laughs> that kid's part of our crew, right? I'm not even dealing with this now. I'm not even having this discussion. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> 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 All right.
Uh, we want them to show respect. Why should I show respect? I don't have to respect. Who, you can't, you're going to tell me who I have to respect. Okay, respect Nazis. Respect Nazi belief, not Nazi action, Nazi belief, right? That's what they believe, okay? They believe that their German group is better than everyone else. So it's their belief, respect it. I don't have to respect anyone. I don't have to show anyone dignity. I don't have to do all these nice fuzzy words that you guys are all saying. <laughs> I don't have to do any of that stuff. I'm free to, to be as much a hater as I want to be, right? We want them to show respect. Oh, don't you want respect? Oh, yeah, but you, you should give respect. Don't you want to be respected? No, I don't need your respect. Mm -hmm. Stre I'd rather have strength than respect, right? I'd rather countries need to have strength rather than respect, okay? Uh, re strength comes first. If you have strength, you'll be respected. You'll be respected. No one screws with China anymore. People made fun of them for years. Made in China, made in China. Now, you, you, you can, would wish to have the economy that they have. Okay. We want to, them to show respect for different protected characteristics as defined in law. Yes, yeah, so they are re respecting it in the sense that they're not doing anything illegal. That's to the degree of the respect. And understand that no form of discrimination are tolerated. Who discriminated? They're just saying astaghfirullah. This is not part of Islam. Uh, you're going to the vegetarian club and saying, I'm a type of vegetarian that eats meat. Boom, eating it. I'm part of the animal rights activist, but here I'm going to slaughter this raccoon to make a hat out of it or slaughter this fox in front of you, and you have to accept it out of tolerance. No one, it just doesn't work in any other sphere of life. As a school, we try to provide students with meaningful opportunities to understand how to be responsible, respectful, active citizens. All right, students should know how to discuss and debate issues. Isn't that what they just did? They never beat up on somebody. They're having a discussion. They had a discussion. What's wrong with that? Last week, an external speaker attended the school to present to six form students as part of the PSHE program. He had spoken to students on a range of issues three years ago, and his talk was well-received, positive, and thought-provoking. It is before all the kids got on, online, and there's all this now response of this stuff online now uh, by Muslims. All right, they're, probably, so, they're probably blindsided the first time. No one knew who this yeah, guy was until exactly. they came. Second time they're lying. But, but now they see their elders, meaning like the people in college, the people older than that, saying, enough with this. We don't believe in it. Simple as that. Do, do your own thing. Don't tell us this is, this is Islam. This is our thing. We can't tell you what to do. You have a total different belief system than us. Your sources are different. Your law is going to be different. Don't come and tell us that this is Islam, though. Right? Can I, can I come and tell you this is how the Punawalas should eat dinner? This is how the Punawalas should believe about things? Or, or how that your family should, or your family, it's ridiculous. Uh, your furniture should be this way or that way. All right, this time around, though, a number of comments made have created a lot of upset, and subsequently a number of videos of some uh, uh, of the talk are currently being circulated. Uh, great job for the ones who had the smartness, uh, the, the wherewithal and the, to, to take their phones out. Our whole school community is very saddened by this matter. We have initiated an external independent investigation into this incident, and appropriate bodies have been informed. We are not able to say... Informed of what? What did they do except talk, right? What Typ did the kids do British, except talk? Typical British. Yeah. We are upset by the situation. Yep. And we, we have alerted the authorities. <laughs> <laughs> what is... Even by, by school standards, by, by academic standards, what crime did they commit? Yeah. They just talked, said their opinion. She literally said, you're upsetting us. That's all she said, right? Yeah. No, it's a very slimeball move. That's a total slimeball move. I don't, like, when, uh, like, to go back to what he said, he said, oh, I read the Quran. I, read, I said, like, not, most likely, I'm just assuming, this guy doesn't know Arabic. I have to read the Quran. <laughs> yeah. yeah and he, the, to them, uh, like, like, when you say, I've read the Quran, and based on what my reading of the Quran, like, do you think, like, they have no idea about, like, that's not how it's done. It's yeah. not like a, like a, what do they call tertiary reading? And then after that, you know, you come up with ideas. Like, this is scripture. This has usul. This is kawaid. You can't just, you know. And also. It's, it's just him saying that is like, is like, I'm just like, who are even you to have an opinion yeah. on the subject matter? And also, who's to say that this is a matter of opinion? It's not lanni. Yeah. You go to men. Ta'tun. Is it lanni word? No. It's qatai. Ata. In any way that you go to somebody. Whether you go to them by texting them, by looking at their... It's a going. Ar-Rijal, is there... 
we're not like your civilization who don't know how to define men and women. Rijal means males. Ta'tuna rijal, shahwa. Is shahwa a dhanni? Is there many types of shahwa? There's one shahwa, desire, right? The word desire. Ta'tuna rijal, shahwa tam min dunin nisa. That's it. It's five words. The whole ayah is five words. It's qati, it's explicit. There's not even realm of opinion on it. So, opinion is a wonderful thing if the subject matter is deserving of opinion, is at the level that is speculative. If the subject matter is not speculative, if it's explicit and absolute, there is no opinion on it. Let's have a discussion on my opinion of where the sun rises, your opinion of where the sun rises, and your opinion, does it rise in the east, south, west, or north? Is there a discussion on this? It's not the realm of opinion. So, all right, they want to go to the Q&A. Uh, but let's wrap it up here. We are, so this is something, by the way, we really have to mention this. Anytime someone has an opinion, say, first, hold on, is the subject matter in the realm of opinion in the first place? That's why the Mubtadia are called Ashab al ahwa because they have an opinion and they did an ijtihad in a matter that is not of opinion. It's qat'i. Whereas if somebody goes against the jumhur in a dhanni matter, we say it's a bid'i, but he, he's not expelled from Ahl Sunnah. Right? You're Muqtadir on this issue, you're Muqtadir. But to be Sahab al Ahwa, people of whims, you put your opinion on a matter that is not a, of opinion. Like if I say, hey, my opinion is that um, you should now come in and um, have better relationships with your mom, better relationship with your dad, repaint the house, and pay for the electricity. It's, it's not my place to have an opinion. So certain things are not of opinion. Anyway, I think it's important for Muslims to know this in the issue of debate, that there are qat'iyat and there's dhanniyat. That which is dhanni, speculative, you can have opinions. That which is qat'i, there's no point in having an opinion. We're all doing all we can to ensure that students feel safe and supported in light of current events. Our priority now is to support our students and staff to restore our relationship with the local community. Bring in a Sunni Muslim to give the same speech that this guy gave. Right? Who should be more tolerated? The 50 students who are regular Sunni Muslims or the zero students who are gay Muslims? Or like a theoretic, the, uh, like ideologically gay Muslim, I mean. Someone, no, people's desires, we don't know their desires. And it's not even their fault. But ideologically a gay Muslim, that's his ideology. How many of them are at the school? So who's there to tolerate? Right? How many regular Sunni Muslim kids are at the school? 50, 60? So who, who needs to be tolerated? The 50, 60 or the zero? We are also working with the local authority and the police. The police? Wow. You guys are really took it. Unreal. Unreal. Crazy story. In the sense of how crazy they took it. They're taking it to the police. After all this, let's go to the Q and A and have a couple minutes of Q and A. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Jeez, I can't stand this. I, 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 I don't know what happened. I have to erase all the people who I follow on Instagram. Everybody, I'm gonna not follow everybody because of these things that I'm getting. Oh, you're getting like spam and stuff. Uh, no, I'm still getting like it's straight up. It's straight up pornography now, right? Like Instagram went. Uh, if she has like a thread of clothes on herself, they call it clothes. But it's straight up pornography now. The only way is not to have it. Because like, if you go on any of these apps, yeah, that's that's their default thing. Yeah. Like if you open the app, you don't even have an account yet. You just open the app, it's going to be yoga pants. Yeah. This is this is the <sighs> default. It started right. with yoga pants, now it's like straight. Like she's got like a fishnet or oh, something. Oh, are you talking about like the, the explore page? Or are you just talking about people who are all As them? soon as you open the app, yeah. it takes you to the explore, to, yeah. to, to your feed. Right, yeah. it takes you to your feet, so you have to, you end up seeing that. Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna, all right, talk to me, Oz. What do you want me to do? Um, so, how do we fix our relationship with Allah if we feel like um, our hearts are dead? If hearts are dead, the hospitals of the hearts are the masajid, and the and the doctors are the scholars, and the worship and the nurses are the worshippers. So, if you're sick, go to the hospital. Get close to doctors and get close to nurses. You'll be fine. It'll take time, though, because it's a very general question, so it's going to get a very general answer. That's the solution. 
you wake up your heart and bring it to health by being around other healthy hearts. Is there any prescription of dhikr that we can do? The greatest dhikr for someone whose heart is dead is La ilaha illallah. Repeated hundreds upon thousands of times. And if they have the strength to recite the Quran such as Surah Yasin every day in the morning and Surah Al-Mulk in the evening. Yeah. Forget it, I'm not going on it again. All right, give me the questions, uh, Arai. All right. Yeah, seriously, getting sins here. I need to get my dhikr nullified because of these kuffar. Astaghfirullah I'm talking like some kind of, sounds like it's extremist, but this is what they're doing. All right, go ahead. Seriously, this kuffar <laughs> is, is filthy. Okay, Moab says, yeah. how would you advise women who say in Islam they don't have to cook or clean in a marriage? And he doesn't have to marry you either. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, that's not how marriage works. He doesn't have to open the door for you either. He doesn't have to open the door. He hasn't, you know, doesn't so have to kill the spider in your room either. Uh, just to tell you, to be quite honest with you, the, the way that marriage works is not, by, is not a contract by the letter of the law. It's a contract by gener- of generosity. Where there, it is a contract, okay? It is a contract... But it's based upon mukarama. It's based upon generosity. That's the difference between a business contract and that. So when I say these are my rights, okay, uh, we are ready to forego the right if the person is not able to do it. And when I say that these are my responsibilities, I rush to fulfill all my responsibilities and more. That's the meaning of a contract based upon mukarama generosity whereas when I have a a, a tenant for example and the wall is broken whether I like it or not I gotta fix it if if his light is out the light bulb is out and he calls me I say that's not my responsibility I don't have to deal with it that is a contract based upon mushaha which means everyone taking what he agreed on and taking his rights and that's it full stop so when we have a business deal together it has. There's absolutely nothing wrong with you saying, "Hold on, you 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 you're short on the payment. Hold on, you, I don't owe you this. You can't ask me to work six days a week, if the contract says five days a week. So that's called, aqt mabni al mushaha. But marriage is aqt mabni al mukarama. That means I have rights. I'm willing to forego my rights if you can't do it. Okay, if you can't fulfill it. I have responsibilities. I will do above and beyond my responsibilities. And apparently someone who talks like this, have you ever loved somebody? Like, have you, do you like people? <laughs> like, do you have friends? Because there are no rights and responsibilities to friends, right? That's why people love to hang out with their friends. Like, I don't know Ahmed anything. Habib doesn't owe me anything, right? But what I do for them is just from the goodness of my heart. What he does for me is the goodness of my heart. So, Marriage is far above that. Far above that, right? So whatever you do that's good for your friends, you're gonna definitely going to do that for your wife or your husband. doesn't need to have law for that. There's no law on friendship. There's no rules. Show me in the, any book of fiqh what is the rule of friendship. There's no rules. We're here because we want to be here together, right? And we're going to do other things for each other, right? So uh, I... That's, that's the, the mentality of, uh, and the concept of marriage when it comes to law and rights. That's how you have to view it. Now, you may get totally legitimately, all right, totally legitimately, a woman who comes into a situation, says, I don't know how to cook. I hate cooking. It's not my thing. It's not that I wouldn't do it if I could. And you might say, okay, well, maybe people are raised differently. In every generation. They're probably princesses in every generation. They're princesses. Like, I've never picked up a broom. So, in this marriage, like, it's not my thing. Not out of some feminist ideology. It's just not her thing. You can discuss it. You, you, you may think she's still, you know, like, worth every minute, right? Or, and everything uh, else in her life is perfect. But she doesn't do that stuff. Okay, fine. What's it going to cost me? A thousand bucks a month? A thousand bucks a month is not a lot of money, right? If you put your mind to it, you can increase your salary a thousand bucks a month. 
and have a woman come in, uh, a worker come in, right? Do the job. So it's not totally out of the realm of, of you know, it's not totally out of the realm of everything. So I'll think about it as another woman has to come and do the job. It could be a man. But if she's going to be alone in the house, it's got to be a woman. Time for him to go. Him to go. <laughs> All right, give me a hook. Oh, he's going to get his shots. What kind of shots is he getting? Rabies and all that. Look at you. Go. <laughs> He's, uh, how old is he? He's a teenager. He's already almost 18. All right. Next question. Uh, this stupid thing just keeps. All right. Next question. How can I, as a lay person, evaluate which aqidah to follow between Hanbali? Ash'ari and Maturidi. So I would highly recommend, for practical purposes, you simply follow, you, you, you choose your madhab first, of fiqh. And then your madhab of fiqh, those scholars have determined, basically, essentially, um, they have established the aqidah of that madhab. So go to study the four imams, which madhab of fiqh have you chosen? And then do that. And then go with that aqidah. Chief Latif says a woman can change her mahr every year. Uh, is that true? Yes, if he agrees to it. Any contract can be tr- uh, can be tra- uh, changed if both parties agree. Right? Sheikh Murad? Any contract can be changed if the, both parties agree. But where's this, like, I've been seeing this recently, like there's yeah. this discussion on yearly mahr. I never heard this before. No, it's not yearly. It's one time and he owes payments. Let's okay. say. Let's it's say not, it's not him paying her a mahr every year. No, of course okay. not. So, for example, if I if if the mahr is five thousand dollars and I uh, pay three now and one next year and one the year mm-hmm. after, yeah. now for some reason or something she discovers my friend got ten thousand dollars in mahr. My twin sister got twen- ten thousand of mahr, and I feel terrible. So, would you give me seven thousand if he agrees? Yeah, right. But, if but he agrees, you, you, he doesn't he, have to. Agree. He's obligated to what was the agreement was, not to. You can't yeah. just change the the digit and change change the amount as you like. You can't. Only one party. Uh, if only one party believes that the change has to be made, that's not sufficient. Both parties have to agree. But once it's been paid, but can it be brought back? That's also, right. also the 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 mahar. She has the right to say, "Don't touch me unless you pay the mahar." That's that's her right, but she can't say that. After she changes the mahr. If he says, no, I'm not, we have agreed on this mahr, she can't say, okay, then don't touch me. Th- that doesn't apply anymore. But if that the mahr is paid, then she can't go and ask for a second she, mahr the next she, year. Yeah, she could say, I just want more for the mahr. And if he agrees, he agrees. Right? Uh, Khadija Asif, can women dye their hair unnatural colors? No. I hereby declare the fatwa. It is haram to, de- to dye your hair woke colors. Blue hair... Purple hair, what else did they dye their hair? Pink hair, I hereby declare it as green hair. I totally hereby declare that as a fatwa. Okay. <laughs> uh, tahrim of imitation of, ahl, of woke. And I would say that imitating Jews and Christians is makru, imitating woke is haram. How's that for a fatwa? Highlight. <laughs> Brother says... That's his name, a brother, with a Z. Where can I look for rulings on the use of musical instruments? In the news or video journalism? Look up, uh, Sheikh Al-Bulti talks about that. He has a fatwa. I don't know if it's translated or has um, subtitles or not. But he is the most lenient person on the issue of intro jingles for news or for movies or whatever. Uh, I heard sadaqa and repentance removes calamities, 100%. I did this for a long time, but my calamity does not go away. Uh, perhaps, but we didn't say how much sadaqa. So keep going with the sadaqa. Keep going. You're being trained. Your calamity is your training. Remember that. And and when the coach determines that the, cl- the training is done, oh, look at all this hair from the cat. When the coach determines that the calamity is done, then... It'll be that you've learned what you need to learn, then the calamity will be over. But continue giving the sadaqah anyway. 
What's your opinion on machine slaughtered halal for Madikis? Well, my opinion doesn't mean anything. I'm, I'm not a mujtahid, okay? Or a mufti in Nazila. It is a Nazila. It is a new matter. And the, the ulama have, and the Maliki have differed on it. They have differed on it. So, for example, Sheikh Zuhair, he holds the machine is nothing ex- other than an extended knife. And as long as you're certain that it's doing the job, it's halal. His own teacher, Sheikh Al-Maghili, he says no. Right? He says no. So the Maliki opinion also allows for um, also allows for uh, one basmala as by fatwa for these massive chicken factories. One basmala for the whole thing. Okay. Qiyas and making qiyas on hunting where you hunt in a tree, you fire at a tree and there are maybe 20 birds in the tree. You, f- you say bismillah for all of them. Right, uh, so the uh, it was uh, Murabit Ba who made that fatwa. He said, "Why is it permissible for for hunting to do that for hunting? It's permissible because you physically can't you can't tell which one is going to be killed, and you physically cannot give the best mana on each one." So he says, "So the issue is that it's permitted in hunting because of difficulty. The qudra is not there." So therefore, in massive factories, yeah. also the qudra is not there. So one basmala yakfi. Anyway, in, in the Shafi'i school, basmala is sunnah in the first place. Hanafi school may have different opinion on this. Uh, Khadija Asif saying, if it's a, not a natural color, but it's not a woke color, halal, no problem. <laughs> you, you get a Muslim sister who's, who's anti-woke, say halal, make them happy. No, but it's true, right? If not if it's not imitating some uh, fisk shi'ar fisk, it's called shi'ar fisk, is uh, a symbol of a group that holds beliefs that are contrary to Islam. That's what's what is a shi'ar fisk. So if they're all about that, we're going to be the opposite of that. Didi says, "Is it important to marry someone who shares the same method?" No, it's not a. It's definitely not a do or die for sure. But I would just simply say that the policy, the best policy, is one household, one method. It's just practical purposes. Or it's, husband's method. Huh? Or husband's method. You really should follow the husband's method, unless she's a sheikh, a scholar in that method in the, already. Then, but even if she is, like the household policy, you're going to confuse your kids. Mm. What do I do if someone joins my nafil salah? You leave them, he may be Shafi, right? <laughs> and it's okay for them, right? It may be okay for them. Could you spell out the Sheikh's name? Murabit Ba, his name is. Murabit Ba. That's the Sheikh. Dying blonde, nothing's wrong with that. Dying the hair dark, nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with dyeing your hair. Uh, any color as long as it's not a color that has become known as shi'ar fisk it's become known for a group and 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 the all these smurfs walking around with blue hair pink hair you know exactly what their politics is right shave, shave one half side of bizarre piercing and they're trying to like treat make this as a mainstream as if it's mainstream right uh half of it's shaved Half of it's, and then their androgynous gender, unknown what it is. That's your faith and your religion. That's your belief. Go do it. And I have the, also, the, you're free to be disgusted by our modesty and hijab. And we're also, we treat each other equally. You're disgusted by me. I'm fully disgusted by you, right? So we're, we have great relationship. We're fair to each other. We're equal. We both despise each other. I used to be staunchly against Discord, says Yunus Awan. And I lumped it up with other social medias, but I realized it's very hard, if not impossible, to talk with my friends. Raheem says, I think he was... Oh, they're talking to each other, I think. I'll get a question from Khalil Hamza. Is it correct to say that anything in anyone that changes is not necessary? That's correct. Anything that changes... Something brought it into existence, therefore it's not absolute. 
And that which is absolute can never change. If someone joins my nefer salah, like he said, now we said, don't stop him. He could be a shafi. What do I do? We say, just continue praying normally. Someone, uh, Roy, give me the questions. For, oh, actually, oh, open the Instagram on your phone. Just open it on your phone. Forget it uh, in terms of, it doesn't have to be from my. Okay, I'm in now, actually. I like this sideways on Instagram. We got the full picture now. Put your phone sideways, right? And you get the full picture on Instagram now, not just the half picture. All right, I'm, I'm, I got my Instagram open. I'm watching and I'm listening and uh, for your questions, if you have any questions on, on Instagram. Maz says, make dua for me. I'm in a situation where two elders have a dispute. They're both close to me. And I, it's very difficult to take a side. And it's a very dis- depressing situation. I can't blame you, but you try to... Um, no way around that. Just make dua. Let Allah get, make, break, makes tawfiq between them. What's the best way to deal with criticisms in the workplace and not let it affect you? Uh, Perspective. Why are you... Speak in there. Mubesh is going to take this question. Uh, Kama, Kama Rosa, you can put your questions here. Other questions are being submitted on YouTube. Yes. I'd say uh, for issues at the workplace, uh, the best the best uh, cure remedy is uh, perspective, understanding why mm, you're there, very good. how it fits into your purpose uh, in your life. And if you have a good reason why you're there, uh, the noise or whatever the obstacle or the distraction is, it's either affecting you because there's something that you can learn or improve or do to bring you closer to your purpose or it has no relevance to you and you should ignore it. So you go back to your purpose. Exactly. So that's a great answer by Mubesha. Go back to your purpose, your intention, right? There was a woman one time, she was, uh, she asked me a question. She said, look, there's a woman who dedicates her life to raising money for cancer. She's a Muslim woman. But she doesn't wear hijab, right? So he, she, she said to me, Really, could it really possibly be that Allah will not, will consider it sinful that she doesn't wear hijab, but she's doing all this good, right? Raising money for cancer. I said, number one, it is possible for Allah to forgive anybody. That's number one. But number two, I have a question for you. She said, it's like, is it really even important anymore? Instead of question, what is, why is she raising money for cancer? Who does she want the reward from? So when I said that, she was like shocked. She said, I never thought of it that way. I said, yeah, who is she doing it for? She said, well, as you want the reward from Allah, you should be doing it for Allah, right? If you're doing that much work for Allah, then clearly you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you love Him, you love Him in all your ways, not in one way, right? So maybe she does have all of that, yet she's, like all of us, not yet complete. Right? Not yet complete. All of us are like this. So I may be very good at fiqh, but I'm not so good at birr al-walidain. It happens, right? I may be very good at sadaqah to the poor, but I never visit the sick. I feel like it's a waste of time. Right? That's a mistake. That's a flaw. So a person may be very good at salah, but they never, they pray on time, but they never seek knowledge. So people are mixed. But the question is, don't come with this attitude as if Allah has to forgive anyway. That's when you're definitely not going to get forgiven because it's not a good attitude. So the question is, why are you doing it? Like, what's your motive? So going back to the motive is a good, great answer. Um, are we allowed to make dua in English in sajda, only in the Madiki Madhab? Is haircutting for women, is it permissible? So if she's going to be touching the scalp of other men and the hair of other men, then no. If she's going to be cutting the hair of other women, then yes. What if those women don't wear hijab? That's not. That's different. That's their problem outside the salon. But if she's cutting, just cutting hair, is nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with the doing that. As for a woman getting short hair like a like a man's haircut, it's makru. Madiki school, it's makru. Why Allah beautified women with hair? So it's makru. Uh, question on rennet? Yes, you can eat the cheese rennet. 
what is the best response to people who use one hadith to cancel out another? It is possible that that is true, that one hadith will neutralize another hadith and render that hadith no longer clear enough to establish a solid ruling. That is the case that in many ways. And that's where when we call in, 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 the, in, the, in Imam Malik's teacher, Rabi'at al-Ra'i, his name was Rabi'a al-Ra'i. It, what he taught Imam Malik was how we bring together hadiths that seem to contradict or conflict or say the opposite things. So as soon as that happens, it immediately will downgrade that hadith, the hadith of if it, prohibition or obligation. It will downgrade it. Okay? Because a prohibition will not come except with clarity. A, a rec, a, an obligation will not come except with clarity. So... We, that is a concept. She's saying like, um, she's saying people are treating it like an Uno card, right? Uno reverse. <laughs> I, I can't believe Uno stayed in business, man. You got to give it to him, right? I mean, that thing, I played it when I was like eight years old and now kids are still playing it. You got to give it to them that they stayed in business. Murad, what would you have to say? Which thing specifically? Anything. Um, I just want to say that uh, when we talk about these things like hadith and uh, deriving rulings and like the person mentioned using one hadith to, um, you know, what they said, cancel another. Um, you have to understand collecting hadith is not the same as deriving rulings from hadith. Mm -hmm. Deriving rulings from hadith, this is a science that has its people, that has its specialists, that has its uh, rules and its regulations. It's not as simple as coming with a hadith and then based on this hadith, you're going to uh, affirm a ruling, right? Mm -hmm. So when people say that, you know, people using a hadith to cancel another hadith, you have to understand that the scholars like Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim, their job or their, or their specialization was hadith collection and grading, right? Then when you look at scholars like Imam Hanifa, Imam Shafi, Imam Malik, Imam Ahmed Hanbal, their responsibility was deriving rulings from these hadith, right? And their specialization was how do we extract the rulings or what do we understand from these hadith? Yeah. So people need to understand there's a difference between collecting hadith and deriving rulings from hadith, right? That's that's each each scholar. What uh, we say, falikuli uh, insan, falikuli insan yel. The Yalzam Haddo or something mm. like that. I remember one of the book examples in a Nahu book. Every person should know their limits. Every person is responsible for knowing their limits. Yeah. If you are not a person in, uh, you know, just like we talked about like the Mujtahid. The Mujtahid is someone who derives rulings, right? The Mujtahid, he's the only one who's a lot, who, who actually goes into the Quran Sunnah and derives rulings. Mm -hmm. He doesn't do taqlid of another person, right? If you're not a Mujtahid, then don't behave like a Mujtahid. Yeah. Don't speak like a Mujtahid. Don't, uh, interact with people as if you're a mujtahid. Yeah. Right? That's, that's just something I want to. As, and also, we should say that when two hadiths seem to, to, to be opposed, that's where the ijtihad of scholars comes in. Yeah, exactly. Right? And that's where madhabs comes in. Yeah. So different madhabs will have different uh, conclusions on that. So music is one of those examples where they will have different approaches on, let's say, the wind instrument. Um, or even the use of the duff. Mm -hmm. We've talked about that many times. Now the question comes in about, are we allowed to make taqlid in aqidah? You, you're allowed to make taqlid on certain aspects of aqidah. You're not allowed to make taqlid on believing in Allah and His Prophet Yes. But you can make taqlid on other questions that are beyond your... Expertise. Expertise. Yeah. Especially questions that there, there are some difficult questions. Qada, qadar. You're also allowed to make taqlid on the long collection of the unseen things that are in the Qur'an and Hadith that we must believe in, that you didn't have access to go search for them. The transmitted knowledges. I don't have to know the evidence of why that there are skills on the Day of Judgment. I, I believe, all the audience said them. there are skills, there are skills. Skills, weighing the deeds. Um, so I don't need to know those evidences. You do need, you don't, uh, uh, you're not allowed to make taqlid on belief in Allah and His Prophet. Can say, right, how many gods are there? One. Why? Because Imam Ashari said, "No, you can't do that." All right. Um, so that's that's why we that's what we can't make taqlid about. 
Abrar says, if you make takfir of someone who actually turns out to be Muslims, are you a kafir? Okay, so that hadith is not, does not mean what it means. Many people said that if you make takfir of a Muslim, right? فَقَدْ بَاءَ بِهَا أَحَدُهُمَا فَقَدْ بَاءَ بِهَا أَحَدُهُمَا Then one of them will receive it. Not receive the kufr, receive the sin of the takfir. So if I make takfir of someone, then either he's a kafir or I'm a major sinner for making saying he's a kafir. I've committed a major sin. That's what it means. It does not mean one of them is a kafir. Okay. Caitlin says, should we consider a man for marriage whose brothers aren't practicing Muslims, but he is? How much emphasis should we put on judging a man by his family? It is to be emphasized, for sure, because you marry into a family and you have uncles, you're going to have cousins. I would consider it, but I would not totally deny somebody just because of that. But I would definitely consider it. That means if I have two guys, both of them to me are an A. But the other guy's family, one is like a, a 98, the other is a 96. But the 96, he's got the best family. The 98's got the worst family. That may tip the scales a little bit. Because your cousins, your in-laws, all the gatherings, that could wear out your dean eventually. You got to consider that. And how many too? Like one bad brother or five? One you could ignore, maybe. Right? Five? Maybe not. Again, question about dyeing the hair. You, you are allowed to dye your hair. It's temporary, therefore it's allowed, and therefore it is, um, uh, there, there is no sin on that, okay, at all, except the association issue we said, we mentioned before. All right, folks. Which one? Someone took it to the level that they said, so machine slaughter is haram for Madakis. Do we need to ask family and friends? No, we said it's halal for Madakis. With as an opinion, as a fatwa, it is halal. Yeah. But I think the second part of the question uh, is also. What did they say? Do we need to start asking family and yeah. friends whether they got? No, don't do that. See, I, we 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 have the more lenient, uh, not lenient, but the wider view, so we don't have to ask anybody. The Muslim tells you it's halal, and you don't see any reason to see that he's a liar. You you believe him. That's the ruling. If a Muslim tells you it's halal and there's no reason to say that he's lying to you to think that or that he's a fasiq of some sort, we accept it. We accept their word. People are investigating. They're investigating for a communal benefit. That's fine. To, to promote something as a communal benefit. That's fine. But we as a regular Muslim, as a regular buyer, al-Muslim you sadaq. You believe the other Muslim. No, I mean like what if like someone is like investigating and telling other people why should I believe you? Why should I believe him? Like if somebody comes up to me and says, XYZ butcher, the meat is not really halal. I need to see proof from you. Whereas for the other man, that is his business, I believe him. That's his store, essentially. I believe him. But you are telling me he's a liar now. Prove to me he's a liar. Because what's the default? The default is people are believed. You're now telling me downgrade this person from to be believed as a liar bring me the proof that he's a liar then I'll believe you and I'll downgrade him as a liar uh, yeah. <laughs> A. Lodi says a teacher I know converted to Ahmadi sect Qadiani sect this, she's a kafir <laughs> she took the students to an Ahmadi mosque and I went along uh -oh. make toba for going along I didn't pray a lot in the mosque though is it correct to say Ahmadis are not Muslim? Qadianis are not Muslim. They believe absolutely in categorically another. outside the fold of Islam without any doubt whatsoever. Yeah. They believe in another prophet. There's not even a discussion. They shouldn't be called Ahmadi. They should be called Qadiani. Did this guy get killed the Nana? This guy got killed on the toilet. He and died they, of dysentery. And they left him. He died of dysentery from uh, going to the bathroom. Yeah. But after al Ana, right? Hmm? Like, like a righteous scholar, he invoked al Ana against him. The whole Ummah is invoked and still invoking al Ana upon him. But you, you may be right, but the whole Ummah is invoking Lana upon I've heard, heard story that there was one sheikh in, like, around the area. Yeah. He challenged the uh, Mirza Quran Ahmed by 
like that. So like, I thought I meant like uh, let's okay. Say, actually, uh, first it started off as a debate. He challenged him to like an intellectual debate. Okay. So uh, Mirza Avram uh, Ahmed, he said like, okay, like fine, and then he backed out in the last second. Yeah. So then you're all right, fine. If you don't want to do a debate, like we'll do like a, a, like a cutter mat debate, like okay. cutter mat like battle. Okay. So let's just both jump off the ledge. Yeah. And see whoever survives is telling the truth, and whoever dies is. Okay, it's that's crazy, but fine. Yeah. So then what happened next? Moment, he's like, okay, and then he's like, he backed out. He backed last, out. Wow. So then uh, the students of the ship, he asked him, they asked him like, wait, you can really do that type of cut yeah. mat? Yeah. And then he's like, no, if, I just knew that if I died and he died too, and like. That's true. Stop. That's stop. true. <laughs> it's a way of killing him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody knows me, and he's the one causing all the fitness, so we all die. You all heard that? You said that uh, uh, an alim he challenged Qadi Mirza to. Uh, uh, a, a, a miracle d- a contest, essentially. See if who's true. Let's both drop off, uh, jump off a ledge. And they said, Sheikh, you were really uh, going to jump off the ledge? And Zemiraz, of course, backed out. He said, no, I, but worst case scenario, if I die and he dies, he's the more harm of the ummah. And I would have taken, been like... <laughs> I think it was the same Adam who, the, who then said, then uh, may Allah's, you agreed to swear that may Allah's curse be upon whichever one of us is lying. And he agreed yeah. to this. Okay. And in front of everyone, he says, yes, uh, yeah. I swear. SubhanAllah. Then someone is saying now, is it haram to marry an Ahmadi girl or an Ahmadi man? Even though they say the shahada. All right, glitters. Saying the shahada has preconditions. You cannot then go and negate that very same shahada. You cannot negate. You enter Islam by la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, and everything known in religion by necessity. Mm-hmm. That's how you enter Islam. Because those are the assumed things of what the word Islam means. You're entering a religion called Islam. What is the assumed meaning of Islam? Things known in religion by necessity. Muhammad is the last prophet. If you're saying Muhammad Rasulullah, then you're affirming that the Prophet ﷺ is true and all that he conveyed from Allah Azza wa Jal. Yeah. And one of the things that he conveyed from Allah Azza wa Jal that is mass transmitted from him and confirmed in the Quran, the Sunnah, and consensus is that he is Khatim and Nabiyyin. Yeah. He's the final prophet and messenger. So if you said, well, Muhammad Rasulullah, and then you say that there's another prophet after him, then you're actually denying what you're saying. What if I someone so saying the shahada is not is is just one part of entering Islam. What if I say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and I make that as a dhikr all day La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah. But I also at the end of this I also prostrate to the sun. You're a kafir, right? Yeah. You just negated. So it's not that the shahada it has limits. No, but the shahada cannot be negated. If you negate it by another belief, it's as if you didn't say it. Okay. You know what's like these people you hurt me you upset me and the person says i'm sorry that you felt that way (laughs) right (laughs) you negated that apology right you said i'm sorry but then you said that you felt that way so you negated your apology it's not really an apology likewise la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah that then you believe in another prophet or another god or another book or whatever all that will negate your shahada All right, let's stop here. Jazakumullah khairan, everybody. Uh, one last question, Ibrahim Khan. How do you deal with doubts that are not logical? Sometimes uh, doubts are, are treated either by knowledge or spirituality. Doubts can be caused by two things, either a mistaken knowledge or an unanswered question, or, in fact, some sins have clouded you up. That's why I'm really, really upset about these things that show up on the app, right? Because you could, they could cloud you up and your strength decreases as a result. So be very cautious of that. What is the meaning of the ayah, says Sophia? It, it has many meanings, and one of the meanings is the age of glory is distributed amongst the people. Every nation gets it once. So the Greeks got it once, they'll never get it again. The Persians got it once, they'll never get it again. The British had their empire, they'll never get it. You get it once. Every nation will stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having had their centuries of glory. The Turks had the Ottoman Empire. right? The different empires have their age of glory. Why? As a test. Okay, See, it, it's taken as a test. Well, and then the other specification is hardships extreme moments of tests and tribulation and hardship is to see that uh, see who's a true believer 
and who is a munafiq. We're going through that right now. Anyone who goes the route of, of, po- of accepting the poisoned well of Islam and, the, and what the West is trying to do in colonizing the aqidah of Islam and poisoning it, these are people, either they're weak or they're munafiq. The, the, muna- the imam of the mosque was trying really hard to justify his belief in this new prophet. He said the shahada doesn't state the, that Muhammad is the final prophet. Yes, but what about the Qur'an? Not the Quran says nabiyin. That's why the scholars say the Shahada includes every aspect of Islamic belief in it. Like yeah. for example, the Shahada doesn't mention the angels, but by affirming the Shahada, you believe in the angels. So just yeah. because it's not explicitly mentioned, it doesn't mean that it's not included. Exactly. nabiyin. Quran makes it very clear. And if he's Khatam and Nabiyin, he's definitely Khatam and Mursaleen. Right? Because a Nabi, every messenger is a prophet. So if he says he's the last prophet, he must also be the last messenger. Uh, last question, uh, the Qibla. We pray northeast because that's what the Jama'ah and the Muslims are all upon. However, uh, I, it is also, I, I personally follow the opinion that the southeast Qibla is a valid Qibla as well. On what globe are you guys uh, flying? If you take a string and you connect it to me. I'm not flying, I'm praying. You might be flying as a Sufi. But the world right? <laughs> We're praying. I'm praying and I'm looking. Listen, we get, sn- we get snow. <laughs> Mecca doesn't get snow. You go pray to Moscow all you want. Right? We get, we get snow. Mecca is southeast, whether you like it or not. It's southeast. So if I go by the fitra, it's southeast. If I go by the scientific globe mentality and the qibla is a pillar in the air, then it's northeast. So if northeast is valid, southeast is valid, any easterly direction is valid. That's the Fatu Shikha Sayyid Ramadan Bhuti when they asked. <laughs> if you make a second wudu with a specific intention, does it override the first? No. All wudu is wudu. Whether you make the intention to touch the mushaf or pray salah, wudu is wudu. One wudu for all things. All right, folks. See you all uh, Monday. All of America is off tomorrow and people are going out to their whatever their families and going home and having a day of rest. So we are not streaming tomorrow. We will see you all Monday, inshallah. Are you going to be around? Are you going to be around like the, the hemisphere or what? I might go to Qatar. Okay, Qatar in a blink of an eye. <laughs> all right. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruk wa natu ilayk wal asr. Inna al-insana lafi khusr. Illa al-ladhina amanu wa aminu salihat. وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته